Are you tired of watching shows that only give you general social media theory and expect you to figure out how to apply it to your own industry? Join us for this week's episode of Social Chatter, the industry's longest running social media marketing news talk show. Not only will you learn the latest breaking news, but you'll also gain practical advice on how to apply it. Now here's your host, Christian Karasevich. Welcome, everyone, to Social Chatter, your weekly social media marketing news talk show. I'm Christian Karasevich, and this is episode 286 with myself, Jem Fuse, and guest Letitia Campbell. So this week, we want to talk primarily about a couple of new options or new features, actually, that are being rolled out to some of your favorite social media platforms. We're going to start by talking about Clubhouse payments. We're then going to discuss some new features being rolled out for TikTok to help you if you're not, for example, good at creating videos, even though I guess you should be good at creating videos if you're using TikTok. Uh, In addition to that, we're talking about some Facebook analytics updates, big changes there, uh, along with some fantastic tools as well. Uh, But I'm gonna go and bring on on Jim and we're gonna kick things off. Um, So Jim, pleasure having you back as always. I know we were we're just uh, on a call, I think, a couple of days ago, I think, about you know mm-hmm. our Launch Your Live podcast. So um, how have you been doing? Great, great. How about you? Good, man. Good. Very good. Very good. Very busy week. Uh, lots of exciting things coming up. Um, but yeah, man, this is going to be a lot of fun. We have a new guest this week. Yes, yes. So, exciting guest. Do you, want, do you want to tell our viewers about our guest? Well, I mean, I, I've met Letitia, uh, you know, through social. She, she's uh, high energy. I know she... Uh, co-host with you on your uh, Amazon live show. So I think, yeah. uh, exc- I think, but I think it's the first time I've actually seen her on camera uh, in the same, in the same, uh, if we we'll call it room, so to speak. So yeah, yeah let's, uh, you, you bring her on. Fantastic. So Leticia, good to see you. I know uh, we were doing an Amazon live show and your mic's muted by the way. So I'll, uh, I'll unmute you. Actually, I think she's laughing first. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so <good> um, <laughs> hey guys, good morning. <laughs> Good to see you uh, again. I mean, this is uh, this is gonna be a lot of fun. So, do us a favor. Tell our uh, tell our viewers a little bit about yourself. Yes. Well, I'm a mother, wife. I'm also the CEO and founder of the Camel Success Network. I call myself the number one sales and system strategist. So what I do is I help very successful entrepreneurs grow and scale their businesses ethically and organically through leveraging email marketing and systems. Gotta say, I, I like that. I mean, I, I think you got your your elevator pitch is down pat. So fantastic. <laughs> so, Thank you. And I know, I know you and I we met through uh, through live stream reviews, which we yes. uh, we do on the Streamyard uh, YouTube channel. So mm-hmm. um, you know, fa- again, fantastic. Like having you join us for a show. I, I was thinking, thank you. I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for an invitation to get in uh, in the room with the both of you. So I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jim's a great guy. So, um, yes, he is. So, so glad to the, the, the two of you can finally get connected. Yes. So, yes. Jim, I know we got a lot of top. We have quite a few uh, good topics, I think, to talk about this week. Um, do you want to kick things off? Yeah. Let's, let's start with, uh, you know, the, the, probably the, I don't know if I call it the most controversial app of the last, uh, <laughs> six months or so, but, uh, Clubhouse is now rolling out monetization mm-hmm. to, uh, not everybody yet. Now, I will say everybody can pay people, but not everybody gets paid yet. So, mm-hmm. uh, of course, remember, this is an iOS only uh, device still, mm-hmm. un- unlike our friends over at Twitter who have rolled it out to both sides of uh, <laughs> the, fo- the phone wars, uh, both Android and and uh, iOS. So it's and, and it's going to require you to use Stripe. I, I don't know, you know, another another account to set up uh for something else but hey i guess if you're getting paid it's uh not going to be that that uh big a deal but i do find it interesting right w- if you decide that you want to start paying people they're going to require you to add a credit card now Ooh. mind you yes. there has been some controversy in the past about uh you know specifically with clubhouse about the fact that they were accessing people's contact information uh in their phone so i I'll be curious to see if uh, everybody uh, jumps on. I mean, I, I can see where the people that, you know, the, the creators that want to monetize will jump all over this. But I could see where maybe some people will be a little hesitant to say, yeah, I'm going to give this person some money and mm-hmm. I'm going to give them a credit card. Right, right. 
I agree. Yeah, that, that is a very interesting thing. Yeah. Leticia, mm -hmm. what do you think about this one, by the way? I totally agree with that point. Being the fact that it's so new, it, I feel like this should definitely, for those of you who are looking to monetize for other options and it goes back into your brand. You got to make sure that you're that trusted brand for the people to want to say, I will, you know, want to roll out my credit card to uh, pay you. I'm still, you know, I, I think it's still a great thing. You know, I mean, um, a lot of business entrepreneurs have been asking that whether they're doing B2B or B2C, but yeah, I do agree with Jim. It's still that trust there that has to grow. It's like, I feel like once it rolls out and everybody gets the opportunity to get access to it, that's going to be their main thing they want to promote. And then they're going to find that they're not going to get the result that they want to get because they have to first build that trust first with their audience. And first the audience itself has to first trust the app, trust that feature in order to even decide on whether or not they want to go forward with it. Yeah, yeah. Very good point. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah. Uh, I, I was going to say too, I mean, you know, Letitia brings up a great point. I mean, if all of a sudden it's going to turn into this, you know, in, in a sense, pay to play like oh if you want to come mm -hmm. into my clubhouse you gotta mm -hmm. pay to enter uh, i mean <laughs> this kind of this kind of goes back to you know d is this a way to try to i mean there's other ways right there's there's patreon there's mm -hmm. buy me a coffee mm -hmm. that if you want to support a creator you know kind of comes back to well does the creator what are they offering besides because you know and maybe some of it is We've heard of these people that literally live on Clubhouse now. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Um, yes. So maybe they're trying to figure out like, well, since I'm not working because I'm on Clubhouse all the time, mm -hmm. maybe I need to make some money now. Yeah, absolutely. And I do see this working for like influencers, like the brands that are like millions of followers and what have you, because, again, they're already a trusted brand. You know, so that's the thing that people have to understand. I, you know, even with a platform like YouTube, how they say you have to have a thousand subs and 4,000 watch hours. I, you know, I see the reason why they do that because before they monetize you, they want to make sure you're using the platform, you're leveraging the platform and you have a solid following. Um, so uh, I see how maybe Clubhouse may venture towards doing that to see how, how often you're using the app and how many people are actually engaging with you. Mm -hmm. this, is gonna yeah. be, this is gonna be very interesting i mean I'm, I'm looking at some of these things so for example to jim's point you know about the credit card so that's the first thing second thing mm -hmm. is um 100 the payment will go to the creator the person mm -hmm. saying the money will be charged a small processing fee obviously you know that's normal um, yeah but it does mm -hmm. get to the point gem where like you know you made a good point like if people have to pay to play in this case it's an entry fee to get into mm -hmm. someone it could be an entry fee mm -hmm. to get into somebody's club um so I see a lot of that potentially happening, you know, um, and this is just like, this is sort of, it's, in, I'm glad that people are able to start monetizing their efforts at the beginning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I still think that there's going to be, you're, I, and maybe, you know, this is the, the marketer in me, but I have a feeling people are going to quickly diminish the value of clubhouse like they're going to exactly be and, it's... Clubs and charging fees to get people in there potentially or exactly you know, uh hey you know i'm not going to tell you this unless you pay me a couple of dollars or something <laughs> like that you know um well and, and that's where win. that's where i think if if clubhouse as an example right now uh, other than having your instagram and twitter link and i still sometimes wonder if at some point they might you know as these other platforms roll out quote mm -hmm. unquote uh, yeah. audio apps will they disconnect those uh, ability to connect on social mm -hmm. but if they had allowed you to put links that actually work in your your bio as an example you could say you know you could have like the tip jar the buy me a coffee mm -hmm. and say you know because then it could be like you know i really like what this person's saying i'm going to go and in a sense tip them for yes. their advice mm -hmm. um I, I think that would make things maybe easier in some ways and it might also make people feel more comfortable because they already have I trust agree. in these other systems yeah um so i i'm i'm curious to see you know because of you know especially with twitter spaces at the moment like will twitter become one of those uh you know will it be you can only connect your instagram as an example yeah. and yeah that'll i think damage the platform because right now there really is no other way to connect with people unless you go to one of these social platforms. And I've, yes. I've found it humorous in a way that sometimes you'll go to somebody's Instagram and you can tell the only reason they're using it is for clubhouse. Cause they have 
little to no content out there. Mm -hmm. They just want to get into the DMs. Yeah, I like the aspect of the contribution versus saying, I'm just going to become a patron of your content because you you may love somebody's information, want to contribute to it versus saying, okay, I'm going to pay you $100 just to get like the full story. You know what I mean? Right. Like I like that aspect because that's what I do. I will contribute to somebody's content, but I may not want to join their their space or, or clubhouse room or, or what have you. Cause it's so much content. It's so much information out there. It's going to, and then on the, on the consumer end of it all, they're going to be part of like five, 10, 11 different <laughs> clubhouse, you know, um, you know, paid channels. So it's going to get to a point where it may just be excessive unless you have some really great content, you know? Right. right. It's, well, yeah. it's going to be, yeah, go ahead, Jim. No, I, I was curious too. And maybe, maybe I was like, you know, imagining it, but I, I've wondered too. Is his Clubhouse? I don't know, know if I say peaked out, but is it still growing at the same rate? I know, like I don't know about you all, but personally, you know, I've got invites that I can give away, but I can't say that anyone's been clamoring like, mm -hmm. "Hey, I need an invite." Um, mm -hmm. I've seen people, you know, that got on initially are like, oh, "I don't spend any time on there anymore." Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, even though you've got clubs, it's it still goes back to, I, I think, from an inclusivity standpoint, that's where I think Twitter spaces, uh, you know, because they're still, you know, supposedly coming to Android soon when it comes to uh, Clubhouse. But it's like I can go out there and there's, you know, 300 plus million Twitter users. So it's mm -hmm. not like I have to, you know, get, send Letitia an invite to get on. Yeah, Twitter. So absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a big deal, personally. It is. It is. I I do feel. I do feel. I do see it sizzling down on the consumer end of it all because mm -hmm. I see all businesses running there, influencers, businesses, celebrities running over there. But when it comes to the people who are buying from us, that's another app they got to download for them. And they're like, "Well, I can. Can I also? Can I still get you on Facebook that already right. has two point six billion active users per month? It's like it, it's like a toss you know so i always tell people go where your audience is go where they are mm -hmm. not where they where they're at where what they're using on a day-to-day -day basis you know so mm -hmm. i think for on the consumer end yes it's like a sizzling down a little bit um and it's not much of a necessity to them um but um yeah that's that's how i see it as what i've noticed yeah and you know just a couple of things real quick i mean for starters i i don't know if you all get the feeling but it feels very like it sort of feels weird to be mm -hmm. tipping people. Like, for example, like if you go like in the States, if you go to a restaurant, for example, mm -hmm. you know, a server is, is sort of expecting 20%, for example, yeah. it, it provided, you know, obviously people aren't going to restaurants much now, but you know, you're tipping a driver, things like that. You're paying, you know, they're, they're kind of expecting 20%. Mm -hmm. And whereas in Europe and other countries like that, uh, tipping is not required. Not required. So, you know, it's yeah, a, it's I do. I do tip. Upon. It, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. And I do you, tip creators. Yeah. I definitely do. Um, I you know do it a lot. Like if somebody, if I'm listening to somebody and they have really good information and got yeah. good content and they have like a cash app link they put up or something like that. Yeah, I would. I would definitely tip. And that's that's getting more bigger now, where people are asking for not. It's not even asking. That's the point. Don't ask. You know, if it's something that yeah. like, hey, you want to contribute to the camp to the channel all proceeds go straight to this channel or so you guys can get mm -hmm. continue to get this great content as you build an audience your audience gets to become so loyal to you that they're like yeah i want to keep watching i want to keep seeing you so yeah as long as they see the, the, that's another thing i don't want y'all to run out those y'all who are watching to start making paypal links and all this stuff you got it they have to see the fact that it is the, the, is is being contributed to the channel with with your graphics, with your camera, with your sound, and things like that. Like, don't start asking for contribution in April and in December you're still streaming from your car. <laughs> yeah. it, it, I will say it, it feels weird. What's I will going say on? The, the thing I did feels weird um, because it's just not like it. Sort of feels like a bit of begging in a way. Like even just by putting that link up, like. Yeah. You know, if, for example, into a couple of qu comments here. So um, Laura's asking, what's the requirement? So the requirement is uh, that you just have to have it on your Clubhouse account and then mm -hmm. you have to go into your account and enable it. So yeah. right now they're only rolling out to select people, um, but it just it does feel weird. I mean, and also Sarah brings up a really good point 
that, and I don't know if you all feel about, feel like this, you know, we're reaching our limits on monthly subscriptions, such as YouTube, Patreon, and dozens mm -hmm. of streaming services. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? I mean, are you guys at your limits with, with subscriptions? I, I definitely always am evaluating, uh, at least on a quarterly basis, where I'm sending money to. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I probably tend to, um, like there's a couple people that I, that I, you know, I have, a, I think one person I, uh, support on Patreon. I've got, mm -hmm. I think so far one buy me a coffee that I do consistently, but, uh, I, like I've never done a super chat on YouTube or anything mm -hmm. of that nature. Cause, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, it's like, cause it's, and I think, I think actually Letitia, you did one for, for Christian. I'm, yeah. I, I I'm, still, I'm still waiting for my cut, but, um, <laughs> I was like, Gemma, you're making appearance to me. <laughs> but but uh but I think that um the, the thing about it is, you yeah. know, it's like do you what super chat does, and right in there talking about that with Twitter as well, mm -hmm. is you're basically getting your comment highlighted because you you know put some money in the jukebox, mm -hmm. so to speak. So I, I just <laughs> haven't felt a need to do that. Um mm -hmm. but I have had some times where a conversation with someone like maybe a zoom call like oh you know do you have a way i can do something for mm -hmm. you and that's where maybe like you said leticia i could say well i've got a you know buy me a coffee or mm -hmm. something like that and, and 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 it just makes people feel good because yeah it, you know a lot of times right it's like the probably the most feared words of a business owner mm -hmm. can i pick your brain yeah yeah um, yeah you, you know you're, you're right. asking you're asking for free information that mm -hmm. i would normally charge for that's and, right uh, so I think you have to be careful about, you know, it's one thing to give away knowledge. It's another thing to get taken advantage of. Exactly. That's very true. Know that. yeah. yeah. And like I was saying earlier, you know, with the whole aspect of tipping and stuff, I, I have a different mindset on it. But a lot of people will be more than happy to give you a super chat, but they're not in your direct audience to join your Patreon. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I have a lot of people who watch me that will tip, but they're not my target audience. They don't have a business. They just love to listen to me. And um, so that's like the flip side of it all. Mm -hmm. So it's like an equal medium. I, I I do like Patreon too. I have a Patreon myself and I also follow two, three people on Patreon. Um, I do like the, the, the app itself. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and, and one last point real quick on just the tipping thing. I mean, if the person provides good value, you know, nothing like it's like going into a restaurant if they give you good service and you go to that place quite frequently you know tip them uh tip them handsomely so that you know your next times you go there you know it's not to like oh get it's not to get that spotlight on you necessarily it's to actually just reward somebody for the really good job that they're doing because in some of these industries it's it's a thankless job you know mm -hmm. so um it'll be interesting to see how this you know how this rolls out uh, i i think you're gonna see twitter do the same thing with spaces probably i think at some point um, I do like the fact, though, that the money is, uh, you know, that the money is is there up front versus somebody starting this and then having to figure out how do I actually make any money from this. So uh, any last thoughts you want to add on this before we move to the next topic? Uh, no, I think we're good. Oh, did okay. Leticia fall oh. off? Let me did see. Actually, <laughs> no, she did just drop out. Let me see. Oh, she said her power glitched. Sorry about that. By the way, that's uh, why when we do the show, we keep our phones handy as well. Uh, in the off chance that we have little glitches that do happen. So Letitia will be coming back here shortly. Um, but yeah, I'm looking through like just some of the comments. Yeah, I mean, the like the buy me a coffee is a good option. Um, the PayPal, you can set up a custom PayPal link. I'd even add one other thing you could do. Uh, for example, if you're somebody who wants to collect payments from people, um, why not set up a... PayPal, there's there's a certain PayPal link you can set up. You can set up a, a Patreon, for example, if you want to. You could buy me a coffee. So you could actually set up a, a short little landing page using, uh, for example, like Linktree or tools or even like lead pages or places like that. And you can put all your links on that page. Um, so then that way it's easy for people to, this is like what people are using for Instagram, but you could take the same concept to Clubhouse, for example, um, or other services if you want to encourage them to leave you a tip. So um I'm just let me see if there's any other good comments here. Actually, yeah, Sarah made a good comment by the way too about uh, go where your audience is and where they like to hang out. Mm -hmm. Can't can't stress that. I mean, that is you know that is a really important point there. So, do you want to move to the next topic, or do you want to bring Letitia? Wait for Letitia to come back on. Well, we could we could start to go in the next topic, and then hopefully uh, Letitia will 
we'll be back here in a second. So, uh, yeah, let I, I, you want to move into, um, <clears throat> I think it was TikTok, uh, TikTok video ads or, or video, yeah, TikTok video editor. Yes. Video creation, yes. <laughs> yes. Let's talk about this. Let's do this. How about, you know, what? I'm going to bring Letitia back in. She's here. Okay. How are we doing? Letitia? Sorry. Did we say something? Did, did you gotta we... hear me square, did you? <laughs> no, no, no. It cut, it cut you off. It cut you off. Okay, good. No, I'm sorry. We had a little power glitch here. It shut off everything for like 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, that, okay. that happened. That happened last night. We lost power for a couple hours. It's out of the blue. Boom. You know, two hundred. Like, yeah. What do, we do? what do we do? Yeah, <laughs> we weren't sure when it was going to come back on. Yeah, because there was no storm. It was just nothing. Power went out. Yeah. That's no, I was thinking more of the lines of like, you know, people have gotten to the point where now they don't know what to do. Like when the internet goes down, for example. That's my kids. That's right. what they just did. Mommy, the Wi-Fi is off. Calm down. It's not the end of the world. Right. Well, they think no. it is. They yes, think. they do. They really do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to move to the next topic, by the way. Yes. And that topic is we're going to talk about TikTok video editor. Jim, mm -hmm. you want to kind of tell people, tell our viewers a little bit about this one? So what they're doing for, for brands that are, have business accounts with TikTok, they're going to allow you to create video ads in your browser. So that's uh it's interesting. It, it probably is helpful in some ways. It just seems kind of uh well, there's two things. One, it seems counterintuitive because TikTok was known as something that people watch on their mobile device. But two, now we have someone else trying to, in a sense, create a video editing process that there's already a ton of apps out there. <laughs> um, so, it, so, you know, you kind of wonder, like, what are are there going to be some limitations? But I could also see where it can be helpful because I yeah. think, you know, maybe because I'm getting older and, you know, I, I sometimes like to see stuff on a bigger screen and mm -hmm. trying to do everything on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what point. do you yeah. think of this, Leticia? I think that with TikTok, they're trying to keep people on the app itself. So I do see why they would say, okay, let's create our own editor feature. Um, my kids watch TikTok on, on the computer, mm. <laughs> actually. So I think they're noticing, and even like with my email marketing, I, I thought everyone open my email through mobile, but more people open it through desktop. So more and more people are using their, their desktop nowadays, you know? So I think that's probably the reason why they're offering it yeah. on desktop. Yeah. yeah. We, we found, uh, like with Amazon live, uh, Chris and I on, uh, deal casters that mm -hmm. about two thirds of our viewers or purchasers are doing it from desktop. Yes. So yes. I was, I was a little surprised at Me how too. high of a percentage that was. Right. Right. Yeah, that really shocked me. So it's, you know, I, I like I said, I could see, like you mentioned, Jim, I could see why they're deciding to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this is really interesting, actually. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at what's here. I mean, just these screenshots. And, you know, this looks very much like Facebook Ads Manager. Um, <laughs> no, no, uh, no stretch of the imagination there. But um, I, I mean, I like the, just the drag and drop interface of it. I mean, it looks mm -hmm. super easy to make videos. I mean, granted, I can go use umpteen programs for video yeah. but yeah i think from a business perspective if i'm a business and i'm wanting to create tiktok ads first off i don't think i'm going to have a hard time creating tiktok videos mm -hmm. because uh for example i already know how to i already know how to do that if i'm on tiktok and i'm already using mm -hmm. the platform and now i'm moving into ads um mm -hmm. so the fact though that now you can just you can sort of recreate like if you want to recreate something like that outside of tiktok that's where it does get to be a challenge i guess because mm -hmm. there is a certain like look that they want uh they want things to have right and that's that's gonna be actually really interesting because if you look at these if they're gonna be very much like what you see on tiktok um it seems like it does blur the lines a lot between what we see for an ad and what the company would normally put out mm -hmm. like on most social media platforms mm -hmm. um however moving into tiktok uh, with tiktok video editor uh, it looks very much like these are going to be very very similar to the standard TikToks people are going to create. Mm -hmm. uh, I find it interesting that this is on desktop though, because you know, if I'm using TikTok on my mobile phone, like I'm standing up, I've got, you know, like I'm not necessarily, I'm not editing this on a desktop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's a very different vibe. I think yes. desktop versus doing it on mobile. Like for the most part, I'm sitting at a desk right now. 
-hmm. Like, am I going to, you know, for most people, they, they probably don't have a, uh, they probably don't have a studio per se. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see kind of how this, this rolls out. Jim, yeah. any other, any thoughts you'll, or Leticia or Jim, any, uh, any other thoughts on TikTok video editor here? I mean, I mean, I, I don't do a lot with TikTok. I mean, the one TikTok video I created, I did it on my phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I think it makes sense, you know, for these brands that have, you know, really dove deep into it. But like Leticia said earlier, you know, it's kind of like this doesn't mean as a business, if your folks aren't on TikTok, you need to go run and get this so you can edit oh, yeah. videos on your. Yeah. Desktop. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, but I, I mean, I, I think it makes sense that. <laughs> They they want to they want to stay relevant, right? Because yep. who's who's the brand we don't hear a lot about, other than for filters? Where, mm -hmm. Where's Snapchat at? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. That's deep. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely no. So so this yeah, it's interesting. I like the point though you brought up, which is you know. Um, mm -hmm. Well, for me, you know, I like the aspect of since I'm always on my desktop. Yeah. I I don't like the like me having to switch from desktop to now doing something solely on my phone, I do like the desktop feature because now I don't have to switch back and forth. So mm -hmm. for example, if I'm uploading a YouTube video, if I am uh, sending out, you know, content information to the team and I'm solely on my desktop, I could just open a new tab for TikTok and say, you know what, I could just do this right here on my desktop rather than saying, okay, hold on a minute. Let me, you know, edit this video on directly on a TikTok TikTok app. You get what I'm saying? I'm mm -hmm. thinking, I'm always thinking like on productivity wise, going back and forth switching. I don't have to do that anymore because the fact that, you know, TikTok offers that desktop feature. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, Jim, I, I prefer to do a lot of stuff on desktop. Like it depends Me what too. I'm doing. Like some tasks I like to do on mobile, but there's some that I like, I find it easier to do on desktop. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and, and you also find like, you know, say as an example, probably more so with Canva than a couple mm -hmm. of other. Oh, yeah. Videos. Yeah. You almost have to do it on desktop because yes. the mobile just doesn't <laughs> quite have everything I you thought need. I was the only look. one who felt that way. I, I thought I was weird because hey, yeah. some people like I, I just make videos, make um canva graphics on my phone i was like i can't do that is it no I'm old? it's not I just don't know. you but I, but I like at least <laughs> when i make it and it's done i can upload it from the exactly. app on the phone so i don't have yes. to necessarily do an airdropper which i could but but i that's where i i mean I, and could, i think with yeah. a lot of this stuff you just have more capability when you're on your desktop i mean even even the tablet versions don't always work right so i um and I, or like some apps, have you noticed if you put it on your tablet, like even Instagram, if I look at it on my iPad, it's like, why don't you let it, let me look at it with my tablet this way? Why does I have to turn my tablet mm -hmm. sideways to use Instagram on my, uh, on my iPad? So, you know, the little things like that, that, uh, make me scratch my head. And, and I will say like, <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> culturally, the other thing I'm also looking at here. So for example, with TikTok video editor, it looks like the ads they're showing, I think are. I think that's Chinese. I, I can't quite, I, I can't read it, but it looks like it's Chinese um, in the ad actually. Here, let me mm -hmm. just bring that back up. You know, so my guess is this is obviously also catering to a certain audience. So mm. for example, I, I would think if I'm an agency and I'm making ads for brands, for example, for TikTok, I probably, I think I would use it on desktop. I, I think, unless that's not their preference. And, you know, in that location, um, some people do everything on mobile, um, but, mm -hmm. you know, it, they could also maybe be translating this to a mobile version. We'll see. Yeah. But yeah. So, so that's TikTok video editor for uh, brands so that they can create video ads from desktop. Yes. Fantastic. So, Jim, I think we got one more topic for the week, right? Yes. It's very controversial, <laughs> at, at least in some ways. Facebook says insights are going away, which if you're a business, you're like, wait a minute. That's <laughs> the whole insights, thing that I wanted. <laughs> um, but, uh, but if you read the fine print, what they're doing is, you know, at least my opinion, I, I'm, I'm not a, uh, you know, a, an expert in this aspect. They're forcing us all to go to business suite. It, mm -hmm. it, they've been wanting this for a long, long time. And now yeah. this is how they, in that, you know, that's what happens with Facebook. And I know it frustrates a lot of the small businesses that I um, that I work with, especially when, when I do uh, training is, mm -hmm. you know, they're like, I did, you know, they change it all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. And it 
it's frustrating because people don't like, where did my stuff go or how mm -hmm. do I do this now? So, uh, you know, I think it's going to have people up in arms as well because it's now like, you know, well, wait a minute, you know, how do I get my statistics to know what's going on? Because, uh, you know, this is what people have relied on because, you know, otherwise you start forcing people into paid tools. And of course, you can make the argument, how long will it be before in some cases, some of these platforms, right? It, it becomes a revenue stream. So they shut yeah. down third party tool access. Yeah. What do you think, Leticia? Yeah, I totally agree with Jim. Um, I, just sitting back and waiting to see how this is all going to pan out, you know, because everything is about, you know, accessibility for the users. So, you know, I'm really interested to see how this, I mean, I have Business Suite, but I don't use it. You know what I mean? It's sort of like on the side, you know, I have the app downloaded and everything. I really go into the insight feature and really uses that because, you know, what I'm looking at is easier to look at. It's easier to really pull information from. So, yeah, you know, I like, like Christian, we were saying earlier, it was like thinking like maybe this is an April Fool's thing, you know? <laughs> Seriously, that's what I yeah. thought it was. It was this mm -hmm. published on, I think it was like the day after April Fool's. And I was like, yes. oh, did they accidentally like forget <laughs> to unschedule this? Um, but to Jim's point, if you read through, you know, if, if you read through the document mm -hmm. uh, that's here, for example, you know, it, it, the first line is, they're telling you that, you know, you can still get this information. Other business tools can help you understand your advertising presences and activities on Facebook and Instagram. So this is mm -hmm. also got to, got to read through this, you know, through these fine lines here. Um, yeah. It's also going to happen to Instagram. I think at some point based on what. Oh, I see. Okay. So Facebook business suite. They want you to use that to manage your Facebook and Instagram business accounts, uh, ads manager, uh, events manager, for example, I mean, I, I do like the fact that it does want people to go into the data, mm -hmm. like on the platform. But but wouldn't it be nice? You know, I don't know how many times this happens to you now, but if your business or even sometimes you get tagged in a notification and then when you click on it, you don't go to what you you can't find what you were just tagged in. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's you have that yeah. happen too. What <laughs> I do, I have that happen too, where I'm going to like, okay, where is it? You know, what yeah. I mean? yeah. yeah. And um, then I don't I, even mess with like trying to find it. I'm like, okay, yeah, like, I just all right, what? okay, sorry, <laughs> right? You know, and it's not that I don't want to, it's just that it's it's too much work to have to figure it out. Now, the other yes. side to this that I'm going to be really interested in, you know, having worked uh with with um Facebook for quite a few years on mm -hmm. a lot of this, on this stuff, um, for example, the whole business suite aspect. Mm -hmm. The like, there are a lot of people that have like nobody's account is the same. So, mm -hmm. for example, some people have had you know, they've used a, a Facebook uh, shared login, for example, that is no longer supported. So, if they happen mm -hmm. to have an account like that, the new stuff doesn't always work. There's people mm -hmm. that have you know, they can't even get into Facebook business suite like, mm -hmm. right, because of the type of account they have or something that could have happened along the way or. Remember when you could, you know, merge pages into one another? You could yeah. still do it. But people were converting profiles to pages. People were. Well, uh, it, Facebook, they, Facebook actually will do that. I, I've seen that happen to uh, businesses before. I mean, even uh, I'm a member of the American Legion here in uh, Marietta. And when cool. I came in, I was like, it was funny that uh, kind of the, the way the page was named. But I was like, well, they got about 5,000 followers. Well, it's because somebody had it first been a person, American mm -hmm. Legion. Mm -hmm. And at some point they're like, Hey, you're not really a person, you're a business. So we're going to make you into a business page. And so right. you see that happen where, you know, businesses wanted to be a person instead of making it a business account. Oh, I see. And, and, and so they, as it, when they catch you, it's like, unless you can prove you're really a person, uh -huh. they, they will make you into a, a business page. And then of course, okay. they're like, well, how do I manage this? And, uh, <laughs> It's, yeah, it causes, I found it humorous. It yeah, that all, is all sorts of problems when you have that. Yes, happen. and you know, for for some people, like they did it because their page was not getting the engagement. Mm -hmm. So by making a profile, people could, they would basically you no. Know, it was almost like a, I don't want to say if it was like a scheme, but basically mm -hmm. they would dump you into one particular type of account, and then when it got to a certain amount, then they move it into the next. Then they okay. would do the same thing and then mm -hmm. dump that. So, so basically, you could have essentially, if you think about it, you could have two profiles. They mm -hmm. were set up as a, as a uh, businesses set up as a profile. And then what they mm -hmm. could do was they would then 
convert that profile to a page when it hit the limit, convert the next one from a profile to a page. And then they would do a merge on the two pages, for example. Automatically, like without even giving you, without even asking you to accept no, or the, deny. The user change. would actually do that. Oh, the, I the see. User okay. could. And so then you end up with, you know, because we don't know behind the scenes what it's like. Uh, you could mm -hmm. end up with a broken account at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it was uh, ads related or accessing business suite. So like mm -hmm. you couldn't get into ads manager or business suite or, or things mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah, I mean, I will, I will say that the one advantage and, and why I created a, you know, a quote unquote business manager, business suite account was if you're managing multiple pages and wanted to have pixels, right. You had to have mm -hmm. that because otherwise, you know, a, a, on a personal side, you could get one pixel. And so if you're wanting to use the Facebook pixel on websites and you're managing multiple pages, you had to go there. There, there mm. was no choice. Mm. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, again, June 30th. Uh, so you still have some time. Uh, you've got June 30th and you're going to be able to export your data into a CSV file from your Facebook analytics on desktop. Uh, according to Facebook, you just click the drop down arrow in the top right corner of each chart or table. And then you're going to have to obviously figure out what to do with that data. Um, <laughs> so I don't know, Jim, would you, would you recommend should a business export their data uh, before this change takes place? Um, I mean, probably from the perspective of, I would think, you know, data is important. So if you're not managing your data, how do you know how effective the platform is for you? So yes, that's I, true. I, I think you need to do that because maybe that means it's not going to carry over to the mm -hmm. new platform. Where, how, wherever it's going to go, business mm -hmm. suite, wherever. So yeah. it's probably not a bad idea to to download that data. Mm -hmm. Good point. So we're going to move into uh, act two of the show. And this is where we, we chat with our guest. Uh, we've got a couple of questions for her. Um, yes. You know, and uh, Jim, do me a favor. Uh, do you happen to have the question, Tandy? For I do. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So uh, what's the first question we have for her? So, so question one, uh, Leticia, um, what is a system and why do they matter for a business? Well, let me first start off with why do they matter? Because you have to streamline everything that you're doing. You know, what I when I teach my clients about how to create systems is you saying, you know what, how can I take these tasks that I need to get done every single day or every single month and systemize it? Right. So systems are very important because I call it like your path to profits is basically how is your business design? How is your how is your business modeled and how can we take something that you do as far as like, let's say if you're going live, like what's the system for when you go live? OK, do you are you marking that live before you do the show? What happens during the show and then what happens after? Like what is the system that your step by step process that you take in order to make your business work and effective. So um, I use systems for several different things. Like if I'm getting a new client, there's a system for onboarding. There's a system for um, uh, communication. There's a system for offboarding and retention because systems help you literally stay on top of your business. You know, if I was to sum it all up, it really helps you to definitely stay on top of your business. Mm -hmm. Good nice. question. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any questions about systems for anything else you want to ask about systems? Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I mean, I mean, we've got another question for her if you want to go to that, but I, I don't have any. I mean, because I, I mean, coming out of, uh, you know, a 20 plus year in the, the Marine Corps, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. all about systems. Yes, so right. We That's how, you know, because when you think about it, people don't always realize in the military, a lot of things we train is it's kind of for like that next person up. Like if, yep. if somebody goes down in combat or whatever, the next person has to be able to step into place. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that process in place you're going to be in big trouble. Exactly. It's the same thing in business. Like what if you have an assistant that happens to take off or disappears yep. or decides to do something else? Like, do you have anything documented on how, how every, do you have anything documented on what it is that you do, how you run your business? So when that next person comes, they could just jump right in and take over. And yes, there is a training process involved, but it's more streamlined. It's more, yep. it's more synced. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and to that point, the other the other thing I want to just really quickly add is just that um, basically, I mean, if you really boil it down, I mean, it's documenting how it, it's it's sort of documenting how you do things in a business mm -hmm. so that then if you do want to bring somebody in uh, to help something. And for example, as, as a solopreneur, for example, mm -hmm. if you don't have some of these systems set up, you're doing everything and you're yeah. doing it because you do it from memory. However, mm -hmm. document it. 
And then this way you can also go and you can, um, you know, you can run that system when you actually bring someone else. In. Exactly. And also no. tweak it. Like before you even hire somebody, you can, you know, document that system for yourself and then say, you know what? I don't really need to do that. That part, like step five, you know, maybe just, let me just skip that over to the next step and change it up a little bit. You know, I, I had to start creating systems in my business by force. Cause as you guys know, I have five children. So young kids. So this house stays busy. I'm kind of surprised why they're quiet right now, yeah. but, um, <laughs> Cause that's a, that's not, not a good sign all the time, but you know, I had to come up with a daily routine and figure out like, how do I want to run things in my business? You know, trying to evolve my business around, you know, my household. And I always say this funny story when I left my job back on August 11th of 2017 to do this full time, I spent like a whole two weeks not doing anything. Cause I felt it. So it was so weird not having a boss to micromanage you or give you deadlines. So like I said, even that time I had to say, okay, I need to sit down and just figure out like step by step, what what are, what are my focuses needs to be, what I need to be working on, what needs to be drawn attention to, and what needs to be delegated or outsourced to somebody mm -hmm. else, right? Yeah. So I started to, after a few years of going from one project management to, to the next, I've used things like uh, Trello and several Asana and all different types of things. I, we, we started to navigate to through money.com and yeah. I love that <laughs> platform so much. We've been using it probably for now going on four or five months. And I just really like the accessibility of it. Cause my brain thinks more in like spreadsheet form. You know what I'm saying? Where it's all laid mm -hmm. out, colors, uh, subtitles and all those things. So it's it's really, really good, especially for those of you who are looking to build a team. Like I have a team of 27 people. So I have designers, I have I have um, social media managers and VAs and all that stuff. So it's just they see I'll create a board and they see everything on that board. I also have my boards for my clients. So the clients can see the process of their if they're getting a website, they'll see the process of the site, because what I was finding is. I was always locked in all day into Facebook Messenger or into my email because communication can take up a lot of your time throughout the day. So I had to sit down and say, how can I not be the one to always have to answer the, the questions, you know, because I was literally bottle, bottlenecking my business. So I was like, you know, how can I not be the one? How can the client can see where their project, how's it going with their project, even if it's a, a, a social media graphic. So they're not always having to come to me and ask me. But another thing is that I did not want the client to always have to communicate with the 27 people on the team. So we have one central person, she's an OBM, and she's like the in the middle and she's the one that inputs all the information on the boards. And then the client's able to come on and see where the team's at with their project. So that so far has been helping for the past five months a lot is like, I don't have to be the person, the go-to person for information or, or the deciding factor on projects. Yeah. Awesome. You know, that's a great, uh, I, I didn't realize you had a, a team that was that large. I mean, yeah. but mm -hmm. systems, I mean, they help. So, so that next question, uh, for you is like, what are some systems a business should set up? Like, can you maybe share just a handful of examples, like one to two? Yes, uh, definitely a system that you should definitely, definitely step up, set up is your social media marketing. Like your marketing system is so important because you are the face of your business. You know, you are the face. So definitely set up a system of marketing like, OK, when are you going live? You know, what's the process of when you're going live? What is how does your social media platforms need to look? You know, that needs to definitely be an established system early on and everything else trickles on behind that. Secondly, you need to figure out what your back end system is. Right. Because that's, you know, we, you spend a lot of time, you know, doing all the back end stuff, the the emailing, the communication, the everything. Like, how can you take all these things that goes on in the back end and how can you systemize that? So that's another uh, second point to creating those systems, because, yeah, you are solopreneur now. But if you want to scale, you can't be a solopreneur forever. So at some point, you got to relinquish power to someone. I when people ask me, well, Letitia, when did you start getting help in your business? The minute I I launched my business. I started, I always had a VA, even when I was working my business and working a full-time job, I had a VA that managed my whole, uh, at the time it was my Facebook account because I thought of it this way. The owner of Walmart 
when he first decided to come up with Walmart, he didn't say, well, I'm going to be the cashier and the store manager and the, sh and the, um, the stock guy. No, he said, okay, we're going to open the store. We're going to get maintenance in there. We're going to get project management team in there. We're going to get HR. So that's mm -hmm. how it is. I feel like, you know, people like say, and it's just my opinion, you know, people say, well, you know, when, when you're making a certain amount of money, you can get all these things. I'm like, no, if you, if, you need to get all these things so you can make this certain amount of money. Right. And so, like I said, I was like, in a sense, forced to get a system because I was like, well, I can't just be a great mom and also, you know, an entrepreneur and, and, and things like that. At some point, things are going to be neglected. So, and again, another point I want to make is you're going to spend a long time finding the right people. It took me years mm -hmm. to find the 27 people I had. And this is why I'm, I'm really protective over them. Um, because it's in these social media sweet streets, people will say they do something and really that's not even the case. So I always tell people, uh, uh, hire slow, fire fast. <laughs> right. well, well, and I think, you know, you bring up a great point. And the other thing sometimes, and, and that's why I'm a big fan of the, uh, the book, the E-Myth uh, series, because yeah. we, you know, like as an example, I, I, I had a client a few years ago that we, she's spending was spending a ton of time doing her own books it's like why yeah. don't you just hire an accountant yeah you know mm -hmm. and and it doesn't have to be like an in-house accountant right mm -hmm. you can outsource a lot mm -hmm. of these things and then to your point leticia that actually makes it easier to fire them especially if you know if yeah it's not even necessary. it's like we're just terminating the contract mm -hmm. right you're not That's paying right. benefits and mm -hmm. taxes it's like you know there's a lot to be said for the 1099 uh, mm -hmm. relationship yeah, that's very true. And, you know, it's it's more of an aspect of like, what's your goal? Where do you see yourself going? You know, and I see a lot of entrepreneurs that started out where when I did, you know, 15 years ago, and they're still doing the same thing today. And it's not to like bash anyone or anything like that. It's just that you, you could if you want to scale, you need help. You need to create. But again, before you hire help, you have to write that out your systems. Put I put mine up on a uh, a Google Drive, you know, Google Doc, and I also yeah. create a video version of it. So let's say if it's something as simple as, you know, getting people in my Facebook groups, like, hey, as a pending person in the Facebook group, here's what I want that to do before you, here's what I want somebody to do before I accept them. Um, so it's documenting everything you do, <laughs> mm -hmm. which I know for some people who is it's hard because I run into situations where we're working with women, um, some, some, some women who don't want to delegate it out. They're used to doing everything on their own and I had this one client say, well, I like scheduling my own posts. I'm like, yeah, Tanya, but you suppose there's other things you're supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, delegate this so that way you could do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Paper trail, everything paper trail. It's the same thing as, as a job. You don't, you're not just going to get hired and then they expect you to go out there and, and do what you need to do. There's an orientation process. You know, they have textbooks of processes you know, all the way from ringing up a customer to how do you write out a check? You know what I mean? So what is yours, right? What is yours? Yep. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's a really good point. I mean, just the fact that like a lot of people, when they, when you're giving that Walmart example, for example, mm -hmm. a lot of people, they look at it and they think that, oh, it's my business. I need to work at, I need to do everything in my business. But mm -hmm. you, you may like at the beginning, like, yes, like, you need to work at, you know, figuring out what those processes are going to be, what that mm -hmm. system is going to be. Uh, you may have to like, for example, you know, if you have to mop the floors, for example, things like that, like you hear, we hear these stories all the time. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, I started out like working in the stock room, for example, and then I moved mm -hmm. to this position and this position mm -hmm. and this position. Like you still pitch in on things like that. Mm -hmm. But the big thing is it's um you can't hold everything to yourself. You because can't you're not going to allow yourself to grow. Exactly. That's, the key That's, That's why right. systems are super important. That's because, right. You know, it, Part of it's getting you to trust people, but that, that's mm -hmm. how like the larger businesses grow. I mean, they constantly are bringing in people to help them with tasks. But they're, you know, I don't say you're not good at it. You may be good at it, but there may be somebody better at it. For example. Exactly. Um, yeah. So to somebody who likes to schedule their social media posts, that takes a lot of time, doesn't it, Jim? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Like it takes a lot of time to get that stuff together, you know, so build like as you're building something, build a second track. And that second mm -hmm. track is these are the instructions that I want people to do for the first one. This way you can move 
uh, mm -hmm. versus uh, like trying to move things along. Like if you're trying to move 10 things along at once, mm -hmm. you only have so much that you could move versus mm -hmm. if I'm moving one thing and I have other people doing helping with other things, mm -hmm. we're moving things together. They may not be moving at the same pace, but you work to get every the whole line. Go back to your your example, Jem. Actually, yeah, as I uh, say, uh, military. You know, I was just thinking that it's moving everybody <laughs> together in unison, so that something happens, to somebody, then you can easily bring that other person in. So yeah, I, I love yeah. all that. So this is this is really good. Yeah. Um. So what we want to do? So you mentioned you touched on a tool real quick. Uh, yep. You touched on a tool called. Uh, well, so I want to I want to move into tool time real quick here. Tool um, time. You touched on a tool. And I got to get everybody doing like tool time, like recordings. Um, yes. So you touched on a tool. We're going to now move into tool time. And so um, where we're talking about two tools that we think can help you as a business, you touched on this tool when we were just talking with you called monday.com. Yes. Can you tell our, uh, tell our viewers about monday.com? Like what is monday.com? Well, monday.com is definitely, I call it like a project management. Oh, I got your board in there, by the way. Does that matter? Yes. Yeah. Okay, this is cool. my, this is our, my board here. And this is like, what I do is I just dump every single thing on this board. Like I do every week I do a brain dumping. So I dump everything on the, on the board on the side here. These I have tons of tabs. Um, most of these are client tabs. Like this is a client of mine and for the down there's client tabs, but uh, this is like the main board at the top. And I have a, uh, my team member. Well, yeah, they call them team members, but this is my assistant. She's uh, actually attached to this board. So she sees everything I add on here. And then I move stuff around to the days, to the, to the project topic. And what I love about money.com is that, well, I love a lot of things about this site is I started to have everyone track their time so we could see how long certain things are taking to get done. And this helps a lot guys, because let's say you're not quite you let's say you feel that you're not ready to hire someone right so you can use this platform you know dump out all your tasks everything you have to do for the week and then track how long you how long it takes you to do something right so now when you're hiring somebody and sometimes VAs and and designers they charge you per hour right you already know how long something takes because what we were finding I I spent a lot of money in the beginning on VAs because I didn't know. I didn't know any better. So I was, I would give them like hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month. And when I started to realize how long certain things took, I'm like, girl, like we can either reevaluate this because this should only take you 30 minutes. You're telling me it takes you six hours. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, this doing this early on, you tracking your own personal time, how long it takes you to get some things done when you're hiring somebody, right? When y'all have that meeting, because I encourage you to have that like a call with that person and say, listen, uh, I, I'm, um, the budget for, you know, scheduling posts is, is two hours. Cause I'm already going to give you the content. You just got to schedule out in the system or go in and do it. Okay. I need you to spend two hours a day on engaging with my followers or, or four hours a, a month on following up. So you already know. So they just can't say, well, it takes 20 hours for this and 32 hours for that and things like that. Cause they're literally like, um, it's not their fault. It's not that people are trying to be, you know, not have a lack of integrity, but it's really, they're just, they're giving you an estimate. Right. Cause they haven't really started working with you yet. So they may work with one entrepreneur and this, something may take 30 minutes, but maybe they work with somebody else recently. And it took them 30 hours. You know what I'm saying? So you automatically know your track record on how long certain things get done. So that's one reason, one thing I like about this particular thing here. Um, and uh, I use it for practically everything in my brand. This does a lot. Like there's some features on this platform that I haven't even started to tap into yet, but this is definitely like a central station. Yes, I've used Asana. Yes, I've used Trello. And I just really like the, you know, the accessibility and the user friendliness of money.com. Very cool. Yeah. And, and that tool is, um, it starts at $8 per seat per month. Yep. Um, and she's for managing, obviously some very simple projects. You can go all the way to very complex ones. Mm -hmm. Um, as Leticia mentioned, so it's $8 per seat per month and that's yes. for the basic plan. There's also the standard plan, mm -hmm. uh, which is $10 per seat per month. And then it looks like it's $16 per seat per month for the pro plan as well yes and those have things like uh integrations mm -hmm. um private uh let's see uh create a dashboard that combines up to 10 boards versus five boards versus one board 
Mm -hmm. uh, Jem, were you going to add something? Yeah, I, I think though I was when I was looking at it, Leticia, you have to start out with at least three people, right? I don't think it's I, I didn't see where you could go. Like I could start it by myself and then add later like it's really you can start by yourself i started it i, I created an account and it was just me because i was testing it out for a few months yeah. and then i started to add you know my team over onto it yeah okay so but yeah because when i was looking at it it's like when i said team size it looked like it only went down to three when i was mm. looking at the, the plan um, yeah actually I, i'm wondering yeah because yeah says let's look at the plan per seat per month 24 dollars per month build annually so it seems like there may be. So it, yeah, when I went up there where it says choose team size, it didn't let me go. Oh, I see. Is what about the monthly? I swear I was doing it by my, using it by myself. But you know, they may have changed it too to where yeah. you have to, you know, because even Dropbox for business, it's like they don't really let you just get, uh, you know, we ended up having to get like I think a couple of seats. Mm -hmm. So my wife has a seat. I have a seat on Dropbox. Yeah. Um, interesting though. V very interesting. I mean, very good tool. I would say, I mean, it, it falls very much in line with just having systems, mm -hmm. right? you know, and, and helping you stay on top of things in your business. I like that time yeah. tracking feature. I think that's, yeah. Really <laughs> and I also like the fact that, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, something that should take like 30 minutes. So here's the thing, like if a task takes, like, if you think it takes 30 minutes, like maybe give them an hour, for example, hour and a half or something mm -hmm. like that to start. And then mm -hmm. scale it back. Scale it back, uh, yeah. But if it's, for example, if you find that it's like, hey, it's taking six hours, mm -hmm. it shouldn't take six hours. Is there something I need to, you know, do I need to figure out? Like, I need to ask them, well, what took six hours? Yeah. Because it couldn't take that long. Yeah. Um, so sometimes you do need to be direct with people on that. Mm -hmm. um, so the second tool that we have for this week, by the way, also is uh, it's called Milo Tree. Jim, do you uh, do you want to talk about this one real quick? Yeah, I mean, it looks it looks interesting. It, it looks like it allows you to create these pop ups on your social that will allow people to subscribe or or follow you. Um, and and so it's uh, you know, I, I took a look at it. I mean, I, I'd like to see. The only thing I thought Ooh. was a little strange is like, you know, it's that whole thing. Like, so if someone's on Facebook, what is that like? Like, does it, you know, because you know, it's already that whole thing of something popping up like a landing page in, on a social platform. Is that oh, something yeah. somebody's going to really like, or is it, uh, but, but I like the idea, um, you know, to make it easy to uh, allow someone to, uh, to, to opt in, so to speak from, mm. from your other platforms. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting idea. You pick a service, connect your account and you sign up for the 30 day trial to give it a try. Basically. Let me see if I can pull up a, a sample. I mean, Obviously, you can use other services to accomplish some of this sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, I guess the Instagram one popping up. Uh, that is nice. I mean, that you can at least uh, apply this over top of some content. Um, so they're I, on I, Facebook and you tell them to follow you on Instagram. Like, is that what it is? That's a good question. I mean, this is showing an example of the the integrations. But, uh, you know, I don't know if you're on Instagram and like, I don't know, maybe you see somebody's picture and all of a sudden when you scroll over it, it's like, you know, Hey, follow us on Instagram. Cause maybe you're not mm. following. Uh, yes. Oh, I see. Prompted him to hit that follow button. Yeah. 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 I see how this tool being useful because people can watch you for weeks and then forget to say, Oh, let me just follow them and I could just right. continue to get their content. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it, so basically you can customize it for your WordPress site or. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, or with, with a single so there's a plugin or there's a single line of code you can put in. okay um and then it basically makes it easy for you to customize these pop-ups to match your website okay so uh think of it like this like growing my social media following if i want to grow it on for example uh let's go to integrations like say i want to grow it on instagram for example uh -huh. uh, this is an option i could have pop up on my website basically it's pulling in your social account into a pop-up box got it got it got it and some of these, like the email one, for example, that's easy oh, okay. to like accomplish with like a tool like an opt-in monster or things like mm -hmm. that. Um, this sort of, I don't know, Jim, do you get the feeling this is sort of like, I mean, the YouTube one is nice as well. I mean, it really comes down to what your business is about. Exactly. Yeah. Like and where, and where do you want to build your traffic to? That's exactly. another thing. Because I don't want, I don't, I don't, when I go to a site, um, having too many pop-ups is, is frustrating and distracting. Yes. Yes. So yeah, you gotta be very. You gotta have a little bit of intent 
if you decide to do something like this. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Because I would tend to think that most of us want to try to build up our email list. Yes. Yeah. So that we, and then pivot from there. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. get get them and, get them off the rented land so you have their contact information. Exactly. Bam. And here's the and, and it does have an email integration as well. Um, and then awesome. the price of this is um, nine dollars per actually, hour. Not bad. Yeah, nine. You said per $9. hour. <laughs> no, per hour. Yeah. <laughs> nine dollars a month. Nine nine dollars a year. Smart pop ups for your business. Yeah. So okay. So check that one out. Um. And, and I, w- I want to bring up one other comment real quick. Um, so Sarah had made the comment earlier, and this ties gr- perfectly into what you all both just said, which is mm. um, go where your people are. So the same exact thing oh, of what are you actually going to be sharing? For example, you know, if I'm going to share, like if I want to build up my email list mm-hmm. on my website, then I want to put a pop up to go there. I don't yes. necessarily want to drive them directly, like drive them over to that rented property. I mean, it's mm-hmm. almost like uh, it's like real estate, actually, Jim. Exactly. You know, it's like owning a house versus renting a house or yeah. owning a, a condo versus renting a condo or an apartment. Mm-hmm. Like you're giving someone else that money, for example, in this case, you're giving Facebook, Instagram, et cetera. You're giving them all of your uh, potentially, you know, well access to like your followers, potentially your photos, mm-hmm. all the other like stuff. Like if something were to ever happen, then mm-hmm. you then have to go find another piece of land basically. That's right. That's um, right. Versus if you own something, uh, for the most part, obviously, you know, if you own something that like it's yours. So, yep. um, so definitely, you know, always try to move them over to your email list, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and start building that email list. If you don't mm-hmm. have one, you need so. to do, you have to, because, you know, it, everyone has their email app on, like my Gmail app is always on, you know, mm-hmm. and a lot of people turn off Facebook or they have that on like, do not disturb. So they don't get notifications when you're posting or, or what have mm-hmm. you. So, but yeah. people always get your emails nine times out of 10, they'll get your, the email from you before they even see that you went live at, you know, 5 PM Eastern standard time. So it is important for you to say, let me just get on my list first and then pivot them from there. And rather than saying, let me get them to follow me or subscribe to me on, uh, YouTube and then they subscribe to you, but the, and then all of a sudden they get other suggested videos of people who do <laughs> similar to what you're doing. So now there's more distractions. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, and that's one last point real quick on that. I mean, that, that's a really good point about, you know, mm-hmm. pivoting them to other social media platforms. Mm-hmm. So for example, if you get them on an email list, you can set up yeah. essentially an autoresponder. So that autoresponder would be somebody joins your email list. And then maybe the first email is like a welcome email. The second one are your social media platforms where you are, for example, most active at. Mm -hmm. And then you're moving into, uh, you know, the other emails that you want them to learn about. For example, hey, Mm -hmm. I have a blog. Here's my blog. For Mm -hmm. example, hey, I have a show. Here's my show. So this Mm -hmm. way, um, you're not just like, you know, telling people like, hey, you know what, go like, go follow me on social and then incur Mm -hmm. and then, you know, hoping they're going to go do that. There's a a system basically in place Mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. So, um, with that, uh, I don't have any more uh, questions. I think this is a great show. Um, Leticia, yes. I'm, I'm glad that we invited you on. Oh, uh, so excited. Really glad to have you on. <laughs> um, just a couple, you know, so for those who want to get connected with Leticia, I, and I took this from the information you sent me, by the way. Um, okay. You told me to uh, send them to, I think it was facebook.com slash the uh-huh. real Leticia Campbell, right? Yep. Yep. Or go to campbellsuccessnetwork.com, either or. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, be sure you connect yes. with Leticia there. Um, and for Jim, Jim is uh, Fusion Marketing everywhere on the web so yes he's got that polo shirt on as well so yeah uh, custom polo shirt but i love the idea i love the brand the idea of branding you know your business and, and representing mm-hmm. your business and what you're doing mm-hmm. so um you know be sure you go connect with uh both jim and this week's guest Letitia campbell um just a couple of quick notes here by the way uh, episode 286 blog post is going out over the weekend socialchefs.com slash sc286 in addition to that we're going to be joined next week by um uh, Amy Aram, she's going to be joining us on uh, that's the fifteenth. Yeah, the fifteenth. Awesome. Uh, Ten a.m. So for those of you who are tuning in and it's on the West Coast, sorry, we did an early show this week. I know you weren't going to get up at five a.m. Probably, uh, <laughs> but uh, we do vary the time sometimes. So it's YouTube.com/slash/socialchefs or Facebook.com/forward/slash Social Chefs. I want to thank both of you for for joining us. This was a great uh, great show. I learned a lot. Uh, Me too. I hope you all did too. Yeah. Um, and I love all the examples you shared, but. With that, we will see you all next Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.